So at the beginning of 2021, we start seeing a lot of information coming about the Raspberry Pico. So this is not a Raspberry Pi where we can put an operating system, whole Linux and start doing a lot of Internet of Things, but it's a microcontroller. And this is a good way to start having taken a look at it. I couldn't really resist and I had to buy one. To be honest, I, like, I wanted to see the quality and how this all things works. So first of all, I like the build, I like the color. Um, the first impression are really nice. However, if I go a little bit practical, there's something annoying me, is why they do have done all the pin location only in the back. And they are selling it, um, soldered like that. So if I want to use some kind of um, like I will need an extra screen or something during my work to to get back again and a check so but so far it's a nice quality and a good time to to take a look against other microcontroller this review is an opportunity to compare the Pico with other board for example the black pill or the STM 32 f4 based microcontroller and also old bad gold the Arduino Nano and finally the Wi-Fi microcontroller, the ESP32. So let's see together. To conduct the comparison, we'll need some criteria. So first of all, we are going to check the popularity of the microcontroller. And also after that, the features or the technical stuff that will define each microcontroller from the other. After that, we are going to take a look on the programming side, how easy and simple to use. Finally, we are going to compare the prices. This is our comparison table, so we are going to gather some data and based on that give a score for each one of the um, like criteria we are putting. So first of all on the popularity we are going to check the popularity on Google, on YouTube. The number of libraries in millions means the pages that we can find on Google research and after that the, the number of similar uh, models. So for the popularity on Google we are going to go for, we are going to take the Google Trend and type the name of the Arduino STM32F4 ESP32 and the Pico. And based on that, we are going to get this number. So we do have 54 for the Arduino, 3 for the STM32F4, ESP32 will have 6, and Pico 2. But as you have seen in the Arduino picture, the trend for the Arduino is going is decreasing and the other microcontroller are coming and this is because historically the Arduino was the, one of the first microcontroller to go uh, as a user friendly with an ID that is simple to use the plug and play idea we are going to do the same for the Google and we, for the sorry for YouTube and we found also these numbers 25 for the Arduino and still between and two for all the other microcontroller and from the score perspective, as you could see, the, the best one, the best score would take 5 and the other one will be a relative number to the Arduino or the, the relative number to the maximum. And this way you can see that the Arduino is quite far away. So for the libraries, we are going to make a simple search for the library in Google search and we will find the result for whatever Arduino, STM32, ESP and the Pico. And we get that the Arduino again have 25 million results when we look for Arduino libraries, which is huge compared to the other one. Quite surprising for the STM32F4 when the number of libraries is quite low. Then the number of model, the number of model is the total number of other models that we can find. Means, for example, the Arduino is the 80 mega um, microcontroller and how many deviation or type of AT maker that we can found. So for the Arduino is a 99, the STM32 is 143, for the ESP32 is two, where the Pico is still, we do have only one, so that we can see. Then for the features, we are going to take a look on all like certain number of peripherals that are useful and really common to what we need. So first of all, this and to, to, to get this data, we are going to take a look on the data sheet or reference manuals depending on the microcontroller and compare between all of them. So I added the link to the description for all these data sheets so you can directly get the, the data sheet from that. So for the CPU, it's we can see immediately that the ESP32 have 240 megahertz speed and this is far away from all the others and given it the, the biggest score 
at just one point the stm32 f4 have a special computing um, measure that give us a more powerful computation for multiplication and some math arithmetic operation so even if it is 100 megahertz it still have enough power and speed to to, comp to fight against the other one where the arduino is far behind but 16 megahertz guy is still something very reasonable to use then from the flash perspective still the esp32 have a 4 megabyte of flash memory which like you can do a lot of things with that and uh, that's that's really interesting to have such a big level of memory um the pico and the stm32 4 to a certain extent still have a reasonable um amount of flash but the uh, esp32 is quite great however on the other hand the arduino have a really 32 kilobyte of flash and that's that's enough if you want to do like i've done a lot with 32 so it's a, still a reasonable thing that depends on what application you would like to make but 32 is still something good <clears throat> then for the ram still again the arduino is the lowest and the sp32 is quite the highest one with 520 kilobytes so it's quite you can do a lot of things the other one pico and stm are still behind but still also have a reasonable amount of memory to to play with then comes the peripherals here we do have the uh, stm 32fr which have like the the biggest number of um, i2c that's interesting to have but the i2c can use uh, a lot of uh, like one i2c peripheral can connect with a lot of um, other um, devices so that is not a big thing but just to be sure again also for the spi the stm32 f4 is having a big amount the arduino 2 but still quite good you want the um the stm32 f4 and sp uh, esp32 having the same number still one or two are quite enough just um like for for the uart which is a little bit different because you need to connection one device to one device compared to the i i to c or the spi but still like two or three is good one is maybe not enough but anyway for the adc so the number of bits we we do have the stm32 f4 the pico and the esp32 having 12 bits so they are all together they are doing a little bit behind but that's fine still like uh work quite well enough from channels number the esp32 have 18 so for the stm32 f4 so they are saying um 16 but also you can if you count the internal one it become 18 where the pico here says only four so i've been looking a bit on it and i'm not clear about the documentation but it says only four i guess these four um channels what they are saying they can be connected to whatever the the pin you select which gives a good advantage however on the other hand having 16 channels is also quite really nice to have for the dac i've been looking for this model there's no one of this microcontroller that have for the stm32 f4 other variant you can find the dac from timer perspective we do have the stm the pico have the um, biggest number which is really good the esp32 a little bit behind the arduino have two so like this is a balance and having these timers is really interesting thing so you can generate a lot of uh, event using that <clears throat> And then the DMA, not surprising, the Arduino doesn't have a DMA, where all the others do have a DMA. Any modern microcontroller or something that you're saying is a microcontroller nowadays must have a DMA. For the Arduino or the Atmel microcontroller, the Mega uh, version or the Mega families does not have a DMA, but the X Mega do have a DMA. Then from connectivity and Bluetooth, of course, the ESP32 does have a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi wi peripherals, which is really wonderful. Then finally, the voltage. So you do have the Arduino having working as operating voltage of 5 volt, where all the other one are 3.3 and 5 tolerant. So why I'm putting 5 for the one that have 3.3? Because most of the devices nowadays are working at 3.3 and really useful to have that. 
then for the programming the programming is the ability where how you you like the things useful to plug and play and just use the the program so for that i worked on the ecosystem support how much you can find stuff about the 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 programming and then also the friendly so out of Arduino ID because if you want to go a little bit more professional you, you can do it only Arduino so all of this one the Arduino the STM the ESP and the Pico they do have some libraries on the Arduino but the Arduino one is a kind of a higher level it, it's good to start with it's good to initiate but not really something that you would like to do if you want to be a professional then do we have in board like inside the board a bootloader so you don't need to have an, any extra stuff to, to upload your code in the microcontroller. And finally, your reference manual, how big it is. It just, just a way to, to compare stuff together. So for the ecosystem, the Arduino, actually, this is, I put a three, two, but because we do have the IDE and the, um, the Arduino IDE and the Atmel, where the STM32 would have more. So the ESP right now, most of people are using the Arduino and the Pico, there is the Arduino one and some Pico stuff. So for the ESP32, to be really honest, there is a different two ways. You can use a VS code to program or you can use also some, um, I forgot the name, but there is other tool chain that you can use, which is really not, not really friendly user and the documentation is a hell. So if we go out of the Arduino IDE, and this is really my perspective of programming. So the Arduino, as I said, there is the Atmel Studio, which is really good. I really enjoyed working with the STM32 F4. There is the Kale, there is the Cube. There's a lot of stuff that you can use. The ESP32 really is hell. For the Pico, they are making a program that helps to, to program, but still they, they, some upgrades, some updates are needed. Finally, for the bootloader, you imagine the STM32F4 still need, you have to buy, to buy some stuff to upload it. You can do it using some, uh, directly some, X, some USB connection, but it's still not really good. And uh, not, I'm, I'm not 100% fan of it because you need to do some stuff by yourself. All the other one, the Arduino have a bootloader, the ESP32, you, can, you have a bootloader, and also the Pico, you can program directly with the USB. Then the reference manual from page number perspective, the STM32 F4 have the best one ever. I really love how they describe things, how they spend time and how they put all good documentations so on putting them. Like even it, not only from quantity perspective, from but also from quality. It's it's really well defined, well done. The Arduino is not that bad too, but uh, when you get used to one of them, you get a little bit biased. But I'm putting here to see that there is a lot of good documentation. Um, the ESP32, on the other hand, it has a lot of papers, but um, I'm not a big fan of how they organize their data. Maybe some other people can put a comment and say I'm wrong, but that, that's that's an opinion and still I'm happy to hear from, from you guys. Then finally the price and here I'm, I'm putting the board price. So we are February 2021 and this is the price I'm, I'm finding on the internet. So the Pico, the one I found is for five US dollar, which is still quite affordable and affordable, sorry. And the other one, the Arduino, it's three US dollar. The STM32 is four dollar. The ESP32, like we are in a time where like five boxes, even five boxes is still really not expensive. So I'm, I, I took a look on the internet, like the um, AliExpress and Amazon. I tried to put the link for this, um, for this board. So if you use this link to buy the board, you will support the channel. Uh, but I will keep updating the cheapest board link for all the time. And as I s I'm saying again, this this um, prices are really cheap and they are really a good quality, um, the good quality microcontroller. So we have compared the four microcontroller. I think this is a good time to take a look at the result. At the fourth place, we can find the Arduino. So even it has really big, huge community 
the technicality or the number of peripherals or the power of this microcontroller is a little bit behind and this is normal because it's a quite a pretty old um, piece of art. On the third place, however, we find the Pico. I think the problem of the Pico here is a quite new and there is still not so many community and um, libraries and all the resources to work well with it, even though, even though the company is working quite hard and the Raspberry Pi company behind the Pico is a really good company, so we should expect a lot of improvement from this microcontroller. Then at the second position we find the STM32F4. This is a powerful beast. This is some, one of the wonderful microcontrollers that are in the market with a really huge family. Um, the only thing that lacking at the moment is to have more in the connectivity, so there is no Wi-Fi or um, Bluetooth on this microcontroller, but should coming soon. And then at the first position, there's this Chinese microcontroller that has a lot of features plus the internet, so it end up at the last position. But at the end of the day, these mi four microcontrollers are wonderful, and this scoring to a certain extent doesn't have a lot of meaning, because it depends where you are, the microcontroller that you are using depends on the what you need exactly. So if you are a beginner and you'd like to really get introduced to the microcontroller, there is nothing better to start with the Arduino, because there is a huge community, a lot of ready um, libraries and also the language or the IDE is really helpful to get your first 101 ready. If you really are, if you do have experience and you like to use high performance um, like product, the stm 4 is a perfect fit. With a really huge family and super performance microcontroller, that's the perfect thing for you. Then, if you do have an IoT project, there is no discussion, the ESP32 is the best fit as it has already the um, wireless and Bluetooth connectivities. Then finally, if you are interested to extend your microcontroller knowledge and to see something new, which is really coming with the uh, Raspberry Pico, that would be a good thing to try. So this is the end of our episode, I hope you really enjoyed it. So don't forget, whatever the microcontroller you use, the most important is the fun that we do have and we enjoy creating new stuff with our imagination. So hope you enjoyed and see you soon, bye!